A lot of you have been asking me which killers you should level up first, and I'm here to tell you what the best order to do it in is. All of the placements on this list are going to be purely for their perks, not the killer themselves. So this is just if you want to get the really good perks early on in your game so that you get them on other killers as you continue to level them up. I'm going to separate the free killers from the licensed killers because I know some of you don't want to actually spend real money on this game, but for those of you who do, I'm going to start with that. If this video helps you out and you want more tips and tricks like this, go drop a like and subscribe if you're new. Anyway, Anyway, guys, let's get right into the list. So I have four licensed killer recommendations, and the worst one of the four would probably go to Nemesis. He has Lethal Pursuer, which basically shows you the auras of all survivors for the first seven seconds of the match. This is very good for just finding the survivors right off the bat, because in the early game is when you have the least pressure, you have no idea where anyone is, you have no slowdown, nobody injured, they could all be working on separate gens. So this perk just ensures that you're able to find someone very quickly, and is really good on killers with high mobility, like Blight, or Hillbilly, or Nurse, or Spirit. But even on killers with low mobility, it's still pretty good, except you won't be able to catch up to the survivors while you can still see their auras. The next spot is going to go to the Cenobite. He has the perk Deadlock, which is a relatively new perk, and it's pretty good. It makes it so that when a gen gets completed, the gen with the most progression gets blocked for 30 seconds. This is a really good perk to slow down survivors that are splitting up and being very efficient on gens, because obviously they can't work on that specific gen for 30 seconds, which could give you time to pop it, or could give you time to, you know, just injure people to get people off of gens. I think this is a very underrated perk that should be utilized more if you're playing killer. Okay, the second spot is going to Ghostface, and he has two perks that are pretty good. He has Thrilling Tremors, which activates whenever you pick up a survivor, and it blocks all gens that survivors are not working on. So sure, it can kind of slow down survivors from working on gens if they're, you know, running towards a gen and then it just gets blocked, but the main use for it is to know which gen you should go to next, because all of the blocked gens are going to turn white, and it doesn't block gens that survivors are working on, so those are going to remain red, so you're going to be able to know what generators the survivors are working on when you pick up a survivor. Survivor. And then he also has I'm All Ears, which shows you the aura of the survivor after they fast fall a window or a pallet in chase. This is a decent perk in general, but it's really strong on killers with the ability to like do things through walls. So for example, Huntress or Trickster can throw things, you know, through the windows or, or Pyramid Head can do his power through the windows or even something like Nurse who can teleport through the windows to exactly where you are. I think this is another very underutilized perk and it'll be really good for beginners to kind of learn what survivors tend to do after they vault a window or a pallet. And the best licensed killer I would recommend getting first is the cannibal because for one, he's easy to use and two, he has barbecue and chili, which gives you basically double blood points every single game, which will make it easier to level up every other killer in the process. For those of you who don't know, every time you hook a unique survivor, so a different survivor, you get a stack. So you get up to four stacks, which is just a little number on the perk icon. And for each stack, you get 25% additional blood points at the end of your game. So of course, if you do a little bit of math, you get 100% extra blood points, which means twice as many blood points at the end of the match, which is absolutely amazing. So this is just really good for the blood point grind, but it's also just good in general for beginner players because basically how it works is once you hook a survivor, any other survivor that's not within a certain distance from you, you'll be able to see their auras. So it's really good for knowing where to go next after you hook a survivor. Okay, that's it for licensed killers. Let's move on to the free killers. And I have six killers on this list that I think are noteworthy and have at least two perks that are pretty good. The worst one would probably be Trickster. He has No Way Out, which is a perk that makes it so that just like Barbecue, the last perk we were talking about, you get a stack for each unique survivor that you hook. And basically, if a survivor touches an execute door, once all the gens are powered, it gets blocked for a certain amount of time, and that time just becomes longer and longer the more unique survivors you hook. I believe it's 48 seconds in total if you hook all four survivors, or maybe it's a minute, but it's something pretty good. And this just allows you to get a lot of late game pressure as like kind of a second chance, you know? And then there's Starstruck, which makes it so that when you're carrying a survivor, anybody in your terror radius becomes exposed, which means they're insta down for a certain amount of time. So if there's survivors that are trying to body block you while you're trying to get a hook, they literally can't do this or else they're going to go down. So this is just a really good way to ensure that you won't get body blocked while you're carrying a survivor to a hook. And sometimes you can even take advantage of it by using, you know, Trapper's perk agitation, which expands your terror radius while you're carrying a survivor. So your starstruck will activate on more people. Okay, the next killer is going to Blight. Blight has Undying, which is undoubtedly one of the best perks in the game. This makes it so that any of your hex totems, which are arguably some of the best perks in the entire game, will get an extra life. So you can pair this with Hex Ruin. You can pair this with Hex Devour. You can pair this with the literally any of the hex perks to get a second use of those hex perks to keep them up for longer. The only problem with hex perks right now is with all of the boon perks that survivors have, they're going to actually be looking for these totems consistently because they're going to want to get use out of their own boon perks. So recently, if you're using hex perks and you're using undying, they're going to get cleansed like pretty quickly in the match. But it is still a really, really good perk, especially for newer survivors that don't really know the spawn locations of the totems. And then he also has blood favor, which makes it so that when any survivor loses a health state by any 
any means. All pallets near them get blocked for a certain amount of time. This is a good perk if you're able to injure somebody from far away or if a survivor stays near you after you injure them. So let's say you're chasing somebody at shack and then you're able to injure them, but they don't actually leave shack. Then shack pallet gets blocked and they can't use that pallet, which is one of the best pallets in the entire game. I bet this would be an amazing perk on Gideon Meat Plant because that map literally has like 50 pallets. It's insane. Okay, the next person I would recommend is the artist because she has one of the best perks right now, which is Scourge Hook Pain Residence, which spawns four white hooks, which are called Scourge Hooks on the map and you'll be able to see them. Their auras are white and they're kind of glowing with particles. If you hook a survivor on one of those perks, it instantly blows up the most progressed gen by 15% and anybody that's working on it will scream so you know that they're working on that gen. This is just a very good passive slowdown perk that you don't really have to pay attention to. I mean, sometimes you have to like decide whether or not you want to just hook them faster or hook them at a further Scourge Hook just to get the ability, but it is a very, very good perk and any passive slowdown will generally be pretty solid. And then she also has Grim Embrace, which makes it so that once you hook every single unique survivor, so kind of like barbecue and kind of like no way out, you have to hook each different survivor at least once. And once you do that, this perk will activate. This just blocks every single generator on the map for 40 seconds, which sounds very, very strong on paper. And it is pretty strong. Don't get me wrong. But if the survivors are smart, this can just allow them to, you know, reset and like heal or get unhooks or, you know, maybe even cleanse totems or boon totems while the generators are blocked. So it just makes them prioritize other objectives than the gens, which can be really good if they're trying to do gens very quickly. Okay, these last three killers you have to get first because they're so good. Like their their perks are just so amazing. The third worst one of these would probably be Clown. He has Pop Goes the Weasel, which makes it so that after you hook a survivor for the next 45 seconds, if you kick a gen, that gen will regress by 25%, which is very, very strong, especially if the gen progression is really far. So this is a very good slowdown, but the problem with it is that you have to manually kick a gen. So sometimes people feel like they need to go kick a gen when they could have downed somebody and gotten even more pressure from that. So just try not to fall into that trap. And then he also has Bamboozle, which makes us that every time you vault a window, it gets blocked for a certain amount of time so that survivors can't vault it. But you can only block one window at a time, so be wary of that. It also speeds up your vaulting speed. So this is really good to just shut down loops very quickly. One of the best things about this perk is you can go up to a window that a survivor just vaulted, fake going in one direction so that they go the other direction, and then moonwalk back and vault the window. Since you have a faster vault speed, it'll catch them off guard and they'll lose so much distance that you'll be able to get an injure or maybe even a down. Okay, the second best killer to get for the perks would be Plague, in my opinion. She has Corrupt Intervention, which is probably single-handedly the best killer perk in the game. It's a one-time use thing where at the beginning of the game, the three furthest generators from you get blocked for two whole minutes. That is so strong. It's just passive slowdown and it makes it so that you just have to patrol the four gens that are near you. Or if you're playing a killer like Hag or Trapper where you need to set up, it gives you more time to set up because the survivors aren't working on generators. So it just forces the survivors to come towards you, which is a very, very good ability. And it's something that just happens passively. Like you don't even have to do anything. And then she also has a perk called Infectious Fright, which makes it so that every time you down somebody, any other survivor that's in your terror radius will scream, revealing their location. So if they're trying to go for flashlight saves, you're going to know where they are. If you need to slug because you need more pressure, you're going to be able to down someone and find someone immediately. So with this perk, you're able to find somebody else near somebody that you downed and then down them and have two people that are now slugged, which is obviously way better than just having one person down. This perk comes in clutch so much as long as you're able to down survivors quickly. If you're not able to do that, then this perk won't be as helpful. But if you're able to down survivors very quickly, this will be a game changer for you. I guarantee it. And then the best killer to get first, in my opinion, and I think she's free on consoles, but at least on PC, you have to buy her with shards. And that's going to the hag. The hag has hex ruin, which I'm sure you know what that is. But for those of you who don't, it basically regresses all gens that are not being currently worked on at twice the speed. This is such a strong ability. The only problem, like I mentioned earlier with undying, is that survivors generally are looking for totems more and a lot of survivors know the totem spawns. So your ruin will not last the entire game unless you're against a bunch of newer survivors, which if you are against new survivors, this perk is so good and will literally carry you through your games. J just trust me on this. If your ruin never gets cleansed for whatever reason, your gen regression is going to be through the roof. And then she also has another one of the strongest perks in the game, and that is Hex Devour Hope. This basically promotes not camping, which is really nice. And it makes it so that you get a stack for every survivor that's unhooked while you're far away. So just like barbecue, you'll get a little number on the perk icon. And once that number hits three, every single survivor in the game is now insta down until they find that totem. And you can still get two more stacks. You can get a maximum of five stacks on this perk. And if you're able to get five stacks, you can mori any single one of the survivors instantly, no matter what hook stage they're on. It's kind of insane. And you can also pair this with undying, like I mentioned earlier. And then you have two lives of devour. So they need to find two separate totems and it can just completely change a game.
game. Like if you're bad at a killer and you want to still try to learn that killer, just throw on Devour so you can still practice the killer while still getting a significant power boost in the middle of the game. This perk is pretty controversial, but in my opinion, it's a fair perk because the Hex Totem is lit from the beginning of the match, so survivors can cleanse it before anything even happens. Those are the best killers to level up in Dead by Daylight. Let me know if you agree or disagree down below.